before internet became ubiquitous with our um, infrastructure, this was the main way that companies would uh, communicate sensitive information uh, long distances since uh, you know wire was not uh, traveling to every single home and business as it is right now. So this satellite here is made of fiberglass. Uh, it's probably about one eighth to three eighths thick depending on the location. So uh, I'm going to have to use a sozzle uh, designed for metal and wood uh, to take this apart. The uh, wood part I believe I can use just to take apart this fiberglass. I'm going to chop it up to about eight or nine different pieces. Probably 90% of this job um, has nothing to do with labor. It has to do with preparation. Uh, safety is uh, probably the most important thing that I'm really concerned about this. I mean, I've got my ladder. Uh, it's a nice sturdy ladder. I can get up and down uh, carrying something very heavy and feel comfortable with it. But we're dealing with fiberglass here. So first thing I'm going to do is, um, since I'm not wearing any long sleeve, this will prevent uh, fiberglass from entering, uh, from, from getting uh, all over my hands as it's done before. The second thing that I'm going to do is tuck my shirt in. That will prevent fiberglass, as I'm using the sozzle, from getting in between my shirt, getting all over my uh, stomach. So now there's kind of a seal around that between my pants and my shirt. And this is a nice long sleeve shirt. And uh, this is just long enough to actually go over uh, the uh, seam between where I tuck in my shirt and my belt. So that's really important in this situation because you don't want fiberglass getting uh, anywhere near that region. Um, as you might have probably suspected, the next thing is going to be to have a good mask. Um, one day, once I put this mask on, I won't be taking it off at all uh, because that would kind of defeat the point as I'm moving around. Second thing is going to be eyewear. That's going to be extremely important, not just when I'm cutting, but if I'm moving something around. A lot of this stuff is heavy, sharp, it's old, and some of it's rusted, so I don't want anything like that getting anywhere near my eye. And as you might imagine, the last thing is a nice, good, thick pair of gloves. You definitely don't want mittens. You're going to want something sturdy, uh, but it's going to have to be thin enough for you to use a sozzle because I've got two different blades to tear the satellite down. This just shows uh, how thick the steel can be and uh, that that blade can cut. And this is just showing the type of wood that this is good for. Uh, I don't subscribe to a specific brand, but hey, it says it'll work, so it'll work. And I've used them before, and they're pretty reliable, so I'm not terribly worried about that. I've got gloves on, so if I can't focus well, blame my gloves. So, let's get to it. I'm going to start taking it down. I think the way I'm going to approach this one is I'm actually going to cut it at the very bottom of the base. And because there's really nothing in the way, I'm going to... Well, I've already confirmed that there is no electricity flowing to it. Uh, I've made sure myself that not only uh, is the electricity not flowing to it and the circuit breaker's off, I've actually made, taken the circuit breaker out. Okay, so let's take a quick look around. See what we have. Whew. We have the transponder, as we might imagine, buried a little bit. So this just should show anyone how heavy uh, this equipment really is. Um, it's just buried in the ground, probably a good inch and a half, two inches of the dirt. And it wasn't a full fall. It steadily uh, went up and down, so go figure. There's the threaded knot that allows the satellite operator or the uh, engineer to move it up or down depending on where it needs to point. And of course we can observe now that this allows the satellite engineer as well to turn it to a specific uh, angle uh, depending on where, you know, where the uh, satellite is being uh, needs to point to. So there's that area there. And that allows it to turn 360 degrees. And then those are nuts to bolt it down. 
And as we travel down the pipe here, there's a ground wire. There's the communication wire. And here is the cut that I did. And uh, the yellow, oh, I'm sorry, the red is from the blade itself. Uh, the red is from the blade itself. And it looks uh, in good shape still, so that's good. And uh, you can observe here that I ended up cutting about two-fifths of this. You can see where I didn't cut. Uh, there's no scoring marks. Maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, but it still held on remarkably well. So If you recall this had a 110 volt and the reason why this needed it was uh, not because of the transponder it was actually because of this guy right here control for the transponder and it's actually fairly simple it's got just two wires and that goes to this ring right here that heats up and it goes around the transponder circumference so this is uh, designed to go around here so that in the winter time it prevents snow and ice from developing over this cover here which of course would interfere with the uh, communication. Uh, there's the center of the satellite. Uh, if you wanted a view and angle this is what the how the data is set. So that's the center of the satellite foci and there's the dead center of uh, what it would look like. This is just some of the dirt that uh, came on here. Some of this is not dirt, some of it's almost like tar that's over these connections to prevent water from getting inside of it. And uh, there's some information regarding the company, the voltage, and that looks like the gigahertz that this is uh, designed for. So that says that the input is 11.7 to 12.2 gigahertz with a plus or minus 500 kilohertz stability and it's got 60 dB gain. This is uh, in between shielding. That's not actually a shield. This is a heating element as well. So the satellite doesn't develop uh, icicles and ice on it. Uh, so there's heating element. That's what we're looking at here. And uh, this, this wire right here is just that wire. Uh, nothing terribly special, but what we can observe is we also have hornets nest.
I already confirmed that that uh, has no electricity going to it. Here's the 20 amp uh, fuse that I actually uh, removed uh, from the circuit. Uh, so that way it doesn't accidentally uh, enable itself if I just slightly unscrew it. Uh, but more importantly, it doesn't let someone who comes in who may not know what they're doing and start monkeying with something like this. Uh, all too often I read in the paper where uh, someone relies on uh, another person, another individual, even if they're, you know, um, good-hearted, it's certainly not intentional. And they say, yeah, something's disabled and it's not disabled and they end up dying from electrocution. So this is the kind of thing that you must yourself verify. You can't trust anyone. Uh, with your life and you shouldn't